Good morning. It's Tuesday, July 25th, and I'm going to make this one quick. Uh, we've got <clears throat> a Fed meeting today. The decision comes out tomorrow. Uh, half point is what they're talking I'm sorry, quarter point is what they're talking about. It's priced into the market. If we get a half point, you could get screwed with the market going down. If we get a, a halt again, boy, this market's going to take off. And there's there's two kind of camps out there. There's Mike Wilson, who has been completely wrong in that, oh my God, we're going down to 4,200 on the Austin P. I mean, this guy has been basically screaming for the last uh, 30 years that we're going down. He's been right a couple of times. I mean, you know, uh, he, he's the biggest bear on the market. I think he's talking about a year-end S&P um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,200. I, I think that's up from 3,800 just a couple of weeks ago. Um, just FYI, let's see, where is the S&P? The S&P closed yesterday at 4,554. Tom Lee, on the other hand, the biggest bull on the market, thinks we're going to 5,000. That would make SPY at 500. And that's a huge move. I mean, that would be at over 10% from here. <clears throat> um, I think we wind up somewhere in the middle. I think we may touch 5,000 if we have that quote unquote soft landing. Um, I think Tom Lee, Tom Lee has been more right than wrong. I mean, he called it the week of, of, uh, <clears throat> of, uh, July a couple of weeks ago or last week where he said, yeah, I, I think we get a 1% and, and I bought TQQQ and he was a hundred percent right. I got out with a nice 10% gain. Hopefully you did as well. Tom Lee has been more right than wrong. Um, he was on there this morning saying, yeah, I think all things are good. All things are moving in the right direction. Uh, where are we in uh, with SPY? Well, here, what I want to do is is go to Seeking Alpha. And, and this is what I want to teach you guys. You guys can do this as well. Um, uh, DJ, DJ, DJI, which is the, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial a a Average. We're going to chart this against select symbols. We're going to say SPY. And we're going to say QQQ. And we're going to say IWM. Those are essentially the Dow, the uh, the NASDAQ, the S&P, and the Russell 2000, Russell 1000, I'm sorry. And if we just go to year to date, I've showed this over and over again. Q's is just greatly outrunning everything. Down at the bottom, you have the Dow up 6%. In the middle, you have IWM and SPY up 12% and 18%. That's just year to date. Uh, at some point in time, I told you these have to converge, these have to converge. So either QQQ comes down, which it has started to, uh, Dow Jones goes up, which it has started to 11 days in a row. The Dow is up. Uh, and these two are just kind of playing, Hey, middle brother, you know, they're, they're, they're in there. Uh, these two are, are the old men ordering soup in a deli talking about the good old times. Um, and, and this is the, 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 you know, the, the NASDAQ is the, the grandkid who's basically pounding on the waitresses, trying to take up shot, skirt up shot shots of him. Uh, and, and the bottom part with the Dow, that's the, you know, the baby throwing applesauce at the waitress. So the baby throwing applesauce at the waitress is going to grow up. The, the, the NASDAQ is going to calm down and these two ordering soup in a deli. Yeah, they're going to stay kind of the same. So, uh, I, again, I, I think it, it's clear to me that through the last half of this, this, month, this uh, year, we're going to see some catch-up. Now, that doesn't mean you get out of the grade eight. It means that you, you plan carefully. Uh, I wrote a note. Overall, putting money in here, does the risk justify the reward? Uh, there hasn't been a great pullback of the grade eight. They're just kind of bouncing around. Um, with SPY, there's a resistance at 460. And you're at 454. So if you close above 460 and hold, then I think you're getting into Tom Lee territory. But until then, I just don't see a huge justification to throw big money at this other than laggards. And when I say laggards, I mean oil. Uh, look at Exxon. Uh, Chevron announced earnings yesterday, and they announced good earnings. And it shot up. Exxon is up at 105. Did you get it down here at about 100? It went down to $100 and 34 cents. Did you get some? 
because I think you're probably looking at about 108, 110. That's a nice 10% move in Exxon, which also gives off a nice dividend. It's a safe stock. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about pullbacks is these, these stocks that just haven't taken off. Financials, great, uh, great example. Bank of America, I bought in under 30. We're at 32.71. Uh, Wells Fargo, I bought in under 40. We're at 48.50. Um, you know, that's when it, it, it's, it's dangerous to buy. Devon Energy, we're at 53. We're at 48 a few weeks ago. We're at 53. And these have good dividends. So it doesn't hurt to hold for more than a year and just pay the 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 long-term capital gains of 15%. If they're in uh, retirement accounts, you don't even have you can trade in and out of these things. Take the dividend, trade after the dividend. You know, get out of it after the dividend. But you have to have a strategy, and that's the key is having a strategy. Buying these little ones makes sense. Netflix, I think Netflix is up today. Let me see. Netflix is up slightly. 429. You're getting to that 430 level that I talked about. Um, yeah, I, I, I think you're going to put in probably around 420. 420 is probably the best opportunity that you have to get into. Um, the, their earnings have come out. There is no more catalyst for this one. The only catalyst is next year. Remember, it's long term for me. So am I worried about, I posted a chart in the Facebook group yesterday. And it had, you know, the first 10 minutes of a stock. And it was bouncing up and down. And boy, you're nervous. Then it has the next five years of a stock taking off. I'm not worried about Netflix getting back to 500. It's just a matter of when. And I have identified that I want to hold it for long term. So I got in. On the way down, I added more. On the way down again, if it goes down again, I'll add more. So make sure your strategy is there and stick to a strategy. Remember, if you want to take emotion out of the market, then get TrendSpider, get the back tester, get the strategy tester. Understand what these moving averages do. Take emotion out of it and say, you know what? I, and there's a great, I'm going to include a video and it's this uh, video right here. It's a, a trading view. And, and I talk I'm about show trading you a view a lot. It's a free um, tool. Then Trading Labs is great. They use uh, trading view to set up their strategies. This is a scalping trading strategy for beginners. There are three rules to this. Now, I will uh, ruin the, uh, the video for you. Rule number one, trade when the stock is above the 200-day EMA. Uh, that's the red line that you typically see on my stocks. Trade above the 200-day. And you can pick whatever time frame you want, whether it's a four-hour, whether it's a weekly, whether it's a monthly, um, whether it's a daily, whether it's a five-minute or a 10-minute. Rule number one is have a 200-day and trade above that. Rule number two, RSI divergence. Uh, they suggest putting a line on the RSI at 50 and only trade when it's above that line, meaning it's not overbought, it's not oversold, <clears throat> but it's in no man's land. And this is the RSI. That line right there is 50, okay? Trade when it's above. Netflix went below, trade when it's above. It's above the 200-day, it's above. This is optional, they said, but it definitely uh, contributes to the, uh, the positive momentum. Rule number three, look for an engulfing candle. This, an engulfing candle is a candle that opens at a lower time frame than the previous candle, so the bottom is lower, and it closes higher than the, uh, the, than the previous candle. So it basically could, you know, think of Pac-Man. For all you old people, it's Pac-Man. The, the, the new candle would eat the old candle. Um, enter only at the green candles, rule number three. That's it. And what they suggest is having a stop loss, uh, two times uh, the profit. So if your profit's 10%, have your stop loss at 5%. And you're basically risking 5% to make 10%. And it, that strategy and that scalping strategy, no matter what time frame you're looking at, should perform at a positive rate no matter what stock you pick. Unless, unless you pick one of these crazy stocks like GameStop. I mean, GameStop is not going to make you money. 
GameStop is a, 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 a hype fad. You know, AMC, they came out. Adam Aram came out yesterday and said, listen, AMC, we're going bankrupt. We need to dilute shareholders in order to stay in business. And, and Charlie did, Zip Trader Charlie did a great video last night about it, um, about how they're just, they're going to go out of business. And the judge doesn't want Adam Aaron to actually dilute shareholders. So um, you've got to understand that there's a strategy in here. Make sure that you have a strategy. Uh, and I'll include that video from uh, Trading Labs. I like their channel. I subscribe to their channel. Uh, I don't use TradingView. I use TrendSpider. I've gotten that into my system. I, I live, I breathe. I love TrendSpider. So that's kind of where I'm at with that one. But you can use TradingView for free. You can use Trading Labs to, to look up strategies. Um, you can continue to listen to this podcast. There's a lot of different inputs that you should have to try and find stocks that will make you money. Not just this, uh, this podcast. Uh, I'm here to teach you to try and help you to learn your own strategy. A good question, you know, and Damon um, uh, commented on the paid, uh, paid uh, newsletter this morning um, from yesterday, from this weekend. And essentially, uh, let's go back here. It's, do, do, do. Um, that was yesterday's newsletter. It's this one, free tools that I use. And part of it is I go over my strategy on Netflix in that one. How I entered, why I looked at it, you know, the, the, the reason behind it. Uh, and how it makes sense. Uh, part of what he he had mentioned was, hey, it, it, it's good to read about this stuff because, um, you know, the strategies that you take all, all seem to make sense. And, and, and I articulate them to, tr to you guys uh, through uh, Savvy Trader. I try and say, hey, this is the reason why I'm buying. Yes, it's down, um, but I believe it's going to be up in the future. Kind of similar to what Brad Freeman does on there. Um, he's great. He does some uh, stocks that aren't making money, that are big, high growth winners, uh, like the Trading Desk, um, Roku. I think he's got as well, things of that sort. But he takes you through his his thought process. And and remember, he just got out of the Trading Desk with a ninety percent gain. So understanding that if you have a strategy and you stick to it, you can make money. It may not be a a trading strategy. It might be an investing strategy. And the reason I can't tell you, okay, you're going to do this and then you're going to do this and then you're going to do this. Or the reason I don't want to tell you that, and Damon pointed this out perfectly, everybody's risk factor is different. Um, the guy I traded with when I developed the algorithm, Steve, his uh, process was different than mine. Even though we were trading together, his process was different than mine. Uh, the process is not the same. Everybody's risk tolerance is different. What's going to help you make, uh, basically allow me to sleep at night, maybe something that keeps you awake at night and something that's going to allow you to sleep at night, maybe freaking making me roll over. Joe's in Mullen. There is no way I'm holding Mullen. You know, I hold, held TQQQ over two weekends. That was uncomfortable for me, completely uncomfortable. When I got COVID, I sold out at TQQQ because I knew part of COVID was brain fog. I didn't want to get caught in a situation where I gave up my gains. So understand that you have to have a strategy. This earnings week is big. You've got the Fed meeting today. Their decision comes tomorrow. It's already priced in the market. Kind of like we said about Barbie, it's already priced in the market. Um, you know, the, the, the Barbie bounce was a, a month or so ago. If you believed in Barbie, I did not believe in Barbie. I was wrong. Um, Barbie's huge, man. God, I'm seeing, you know, fathers dressed in pink. <laughs> That's when, you know, it's a cultural icon, but, um, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, we got a couple of earnings and it's today, uh, Microsoft, um, let's look at the four hour. You're seeing kind of that, that button hook that we talk about a lot. Um, the RSI is down here at b -b -b 50, no man's land. The MACD has crossed down. The volumes kind of just getting that volume right there was when they announced Copilot with chat GPT. You got the earnings today afterwards. If you're not in this one, I don't think you get into it. But I also think there's a possibility this one goes to th probably 360. Um, 
So I'm not quite sure where this one's going. You can see right here from a, a, a weekly standpoint, we're right there at all time highs because th this stock has never been this high. Um, when you were down here uh, in 2023 at uh, you know January, but at the 200 day, should have gotten it. When you were down here in October uh, with the October lows, 2022, should have gotten it. You know, even when you were here August 15th, should have gotten it. I mean, just getting into this one doesn't seem to be an optimal time. Um, maybe this is the earnings where they come back down to reality, but that 50 days moving positive, that 200 days moving positive, the nine days still positive, and the 21 days still positive. The MACD is just getting to a point where it's crossing over, and that's only because this one for the last three, four weeks has been trading in this range. Hasn't broken out. Maybe it's capitulating. Maybe it's going to 400. But I'm in this one at significantly lower prices. Uh, I said to get it last week when it was under 330. Um, Should have gotten it, but it might be a little bit too late. Uh, the other one that's coming out is Google. And Google's earnings, we talked about Google um, there uh, after the bell today. Um the algorithm has you out with a 3% loss right there. This is the four-hour algorithm. I said anything under 120. If it dips under 120, it's at 122 right now. If it dips under 120, just buy it. I mean, the, the danger with Google is that they, and I watched a great video last night on YouTube about how Google Bard um, may not beat um, ChatGPT just because people hate Google. And the reason people hate Google is they hate the incumbent. Um, they hate the Google, you know, look at look at Microsoft, or I'm sorry, Meta. Um, you know, the reason TikTok kind of ate Meta's lunch is not because uh, Meta is bad, but people thought, hey, Meta is bad. They take our data. Um, you know, look at the Cambridge Analytica thing. Look at uh, them taking all of our data. Google's the same thing. And people don't want to use Bard because they want to use ChatGPT because they're like, Oh, maybe it's not so bad. So it's not the 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 big bad daddy. But Microsoft now is chat GPT. So it's all bad. Um, but Google, in my mind, I think they're doing it right. I think Bard is far better than chat GPT. A, it uses the live internet. B, it, uh, the interface is significantly better. Um, C, I, I get a lot fewer um, hallucinogens. Uh, hallucinations, I should say. Uh, and, and, and finally you can integrate everything in Bard into Google documents. It's fantastic. I don't have to take it out of chat GPT and put code into Excel. You know, that's what copilot's doing, but they're going to charge for it. And Google's giving away for free. So I, I'm, I'm a believer in Google. Uh, I also, you know, I use Gmail, um, if you don't use Gmail and you use ProtonMail, you use something else, uh, I mean, maybe you don't want to invest in Google. I'm a believer in this one. So between those two, I do think that that Google is probably the better bet. Um, and, and if we go over here and we just go Google, let's go Google versus Microsoft. Um, let's put this up. <clears throat> and we'll put, you know what? We're going to put in the next one too. Uh, we're going to put in Meta and we're going to put in Microsoft. Update chart. Let's look at the year to date. Uh, clearly, Meta is the killer. Now, Meta also, in my mind, has the biggest growth opportunity. I don't think Microsoft or Google have the growth opportunity that Meta does. Because when we talk about uh, good companies with good earnings, this is a, now a good company with good earnings. And they haven't reached their previous high versus Microsoft and Google uh, even Google, I don't think it's reached its previous high. Let's see. Let's go to a weekly of Google. Yeah, Google still has 148, still has 20 points to go before it gets up there. Um, but Meta, same thing. I think Meta has a lower PE, uh, a bigger opportunity because Meta actually has their large language model in Llama. I think they're going to come out with that. The thing you're going to see is they're going to hammer Meta about... Uh, Spaces. I think the spaces is that what it's called? I can't even remember what the damn thing is called anymore. I think that's what they're going to call be big on. 
So they're going to hammer them on that one. I think th under 300 is a great price. I may get into this one, probably a four-figure investment today before earnings. You can see it's kind of, um, you know, button hooked a little bit over, but that's just what if the earnings are good and the stock goes down, that's people taking profits. Simple as that. Simple as that. Um, so I, 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 and I know I've said I'm getting into Tesla at some point in time. I keep missing it. Tesla is up at 271. I wanted to get this one at 250. It's up 1% again today. Not getting the chance at 250. My life gets busy. I just don't put in the orders and I should. But Tesla, I want, I, I, I do own Tesla through ETFs. So I'm not completely um, ignorant or out of the game. I own it in ETFs. So uh, make sure that your portfolio has some exposure to it because this is a, a $300 stock by the end of the year. At some point in time, it's a $300 stock by the end of the year. Uh, we talked about how Meta and Google haven't reached their highs. Same thing. Look, you're almost 400 there with, with uh, Tesla. Almost at 400. And you're at 260, 270. I, th I think if you get this one uh, in the 250s, I think you're fine. Just add slowly. Uh, one that came up yesterday, DRN. This was a trigger. This is the triple levered real estate market. And we talked about the real estate market really taking off. This is secondary cross up. The initial one was 905. You're at 1045 right now. Great play. That 945 was just a month ago, June 28th. So in a month, you've got what? 15% in a triple levered real estate <clears throat> ETF. Hasn't gotten you out. If you want to play the 65 minute, play the 65 minute. But it's clear this 200 day on the real estate is actually turning around. The 50 day, that golden cross just happened. So DRN and DRV are the two uh, two alternatives. Um, let me look at, oh, Brandon wanted me to look at O and FSM. Let's look at O first. This is realty, I think. Uh, realty income. It's a REIT. Uh, real estate has taken off of recent and you can see it's up above the 200 day. Um, their earnings are coming up August, August 2nd after the market, 14 days from now. Um, you've got this descending triangle, which it has broken out of, and it's got all the confirmation that you need. Uh, the actual, uh, algorithm had you buy in here at 60, you're at 63, not a huge move, a good enough move. Uh, the biggest thing with realty income is the dividend, 4.84%. This hasn't been horrible. Um, REITs, in my mind, are not great investments. The thing you have to realize with this is the PE is super high, still high. Uh, PE is 44, forward PE is 43. This is predictable income. The average target price is 69. You're trading at 63. I don't think that you have huge upside in this one. But again, you're buying it for that dividend. Um, you're buying it for a consistent 4.84%. I At that rate, just buy a bond. I mean, you're not going to lose your capital on a bond. Um, this one, I, I just think you're going to probably trade between 60 and 70. Um, so it's not bad to have that income. But that PE is huge. If we do have some type of crisis, um, you had made mention of Dollar Tree and stuff like that. I don't know what makes up their their portfolio. Uh, read into it. Uh, the most recent, both sales, um, the Neil Abram, see remarks. I have no idea. February, he sold $1.7 million. It's not a lot. Not a ton. I mean, these guys have a pretty big market cap of $42 billion. So it's not a lot to sell a million dollars worth. Um, but I, I, I'm just not a fan of, of real estate. Let's look at FSM. He wanted this. Was, this is a silver one. Let's see what they do. Um, Fortuna Silver Mines. I don't know if that's Fortuna La Fortuna in uh, Costa Rica, which uh, I love. I have a picture of myself under the La Fortuna uh, waterfall. And it says, do not swim close. It will break your neck. <laughs> um, it's kind of turned over. I would say right now, I probably wouldn't buy it. doesn't have confirmation. 309 down there. Uh, I have never been a huge fan of metals. Much more a fan of the miners in these. 
that's what this is, it seems. But they only have a one point four billion, one point zero four billion dollar market cap. Not huge. No dividend. Um, year to date, it's down four eh. percent. The average target price, they don't have one. It's not hugely covered. Um, Scotia Bank just May thirtieth said four twenty five. It's trading at three dollars and eighty five cents. I don't know. I mean, you know, if 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 this gets you excited, have at it, Hoss. <laughs> Um, I don't see any insider tradings. Eh. I mean, you know, I'd rather have something with a little bit more gusto like Cleveland Cliffs. Their earnings are coming up or did they report earnings? I don't know. Uh, it looks like they reported earnings. It is up slightly. Um, looks like it's up 0.97, 1667. Um, they reported earnings this morning, 69 cents. I think it was good. I, I still think this is a twenty dollars stock. I just don't think it's it's probably boosting a ton. I own this one. I think average price uh, is down to about eighteen now. So uh, I own it. I own, identified it as a long term. I am down on it, but I continue to buy on the way down because here's the uh, the long term. Let's look at a weekly. See, you're just touching the two hundred day. You know, a little bit under there. So um, yeah, yeah, thirty two. I still think it's going back to 30. I mean, at some point in time, Cleveland Cliffs comes up there. So uh, those are two that Brandon want. Now scans. I got a long list of scans. Like Frank Constanza says during um, during uh, Festivus, I got a lot of problems with you people. I got a long list of scans. Boeing. First one is Boeing. Uh, this one, I still say get it under 200. I think 214 is a little crazy. They have earnings coming up, looks like today. Um, earnings reported pre-market. No, I'm sorry, tomorrow pre-market. Tomorrow pre-market is Boeing. Uh, Disney had a cross-up. I'd stay out of Disney personally. I'm in, but 87.36. I don't think that's a bad price. I think at some point in time, you do come back to cover that gap. And that's what I'm holding out for. I've got this one in both uh, brokerage and retirement. I think my average purchase price in, in and I focus much more on brokerage than than retirement. I'm sorry, yeah, on uh, well, I should say retirement rather than brokerage because I can sell it any time in retirement. Uh, brokerage, I I I think I've got about a ninety six per dollar uh, average price. I've added a little bit. I'll add probably a little bit more. I don't know that I'd necessarily get into this one. Energy name Cord. Uh, this is one that has had huge dividends. Here, let's let's just look it up. Uh, stock dividend. We'll look up the, the dividend history. Oh, here we go. I can just go over here. We'll go CHRD, and you can go over here. Oh, CHRD. We'll look at that. Do, 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 and we'll go to dividends, and we'll go to dividend history. Uh Look at that. Yeah. Dollar twenty five. This was where fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollar dividend. Fifteen dollars. Last year it was huge. Uh twenty twenty three, back in March, big three dollars. Um, this one, will they announce another special dividend? Probably. I mean, they're just gonna make money. So it has a cross up here at one fifty one. I don't think it's a bad play. The MACD is way down there, it's crossing up. The RSI is at fifty one. So I like this one. Talked about DRN already. Uh, VNQ, there's a couple. It's ironic that Brandon asked about um, Realty O, symbol O, because this one, Vanguard Real Estate, VNQ, cross up, and it's been doing really well. And Spider Sectors, XLRE, both of those, cross ups on the secondary. So initial cross up was way back here at 37. You're at 38.98. For an X out for a Realty Sector, that's a great one. Uh, we had a bunch of Chinese stocks that crossed up. Pin Duo Duo. Love it. Secondary cross up. China's uh, putting more money. We talked about yesterday, Kathy Wood's getting out of China. All these Chinese stocks just, just crossed up yesterday because they announced more stimulus. NEO. NEO's at 1174. The algorithm had you buy in here just over the 200 day at 940 on July, June 29th. Great. KWeb. This is the main China. Um, uh, ETF, KWeb. So if you want just exposure to everything in China, KWeb. KWeb's not bad. XPEV. This is uh, another car company like Neo. This has been a great one. 881. 
You're up at $16. You've doubled your money. Just in less than a month, you've doubled your money. Uh, one that I have in my own personal list that I don't know I'd actually invest in, I have not, I've got it in the list, is Sabre. There's a gap up here at six, which is interesting because this has just been beaten down. If you don't know Sabre, these guys are a travel uh, software for uh, travel agents. And basically, they use it to book everything. So Sabre's just that. Uh, Baba, we had a cross-up. Uh, I think Baba, again, I've, I've said it before, I think it's a $100 stock. When it was down here at 83, I was saying buy it, buy it, buy it. I'm not big on China. I did not buy it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Baba. Honeywell, H-O-N, Honeywell. Um, this is a great one, 209.15. I mean, it's above the 200-day. You got positive thing. You got the catalyst of the earnings coming up July 26th, Honeywell. JD, another Chinese company. Cross up. Uh, this was at thirty five nineteen. You're at thirty eight thirty five. Uh, T Mobile, T M U S. This is the one that I think is the the best of the bunch. But cell phones, in my mind, race to the bottom. I just I, I'm not a huge b big fan of it. General Dynamics. Uh, Joe and I just talked about um, RTX. They reported earnings. Uh, <laughs> they beat uh, on top and bottom line. And yet the price crashed. Well, RTX came out with a manufacturing defect in uh, the Pratt & Whitney unit. Like Joe says, Joe is our resident um, aeronautics expert. Any reaction in that stock is an overreaction. You can probably buy it. You'll be fine. So uh, that is RTX. They reported, if you want to get into the defense sector, you want to get into that stuff, go ahead and do it. JD. And finally, AMT, American Tower. This is another realty, realty thing. Uh, American Tower is a REIT. They got a bunch of towers. Uh, 190. 190. If you go over a long term of this one and we go to weekly, it's been a falling knife. I don't know that I'd get into it. Crossed up. Could you play the rebound? Maybe. So, okay, there you go. Uh, let's talk about um, where to go to get all of my links. Linktree. Linktree.com, L I N K T R dot E E slash daily stock pick. You'll find everything. You'll find the link to TrendSpider. All of those charts are TrendSpider. You can get everything that I have, both algos, four hour and 65 minute, all my watch lists, and all the scanners. So when I'm on vacation, when I'm not doing something, you can go there. Uh, visible, $20 off your first uh, month of phone service. If you got phone service and you're paying anything more than $20, uh, $25 a month, Visible is the way to go. It's it's unlimited. That's what I have. So click on that link. Get $20 off your first month is $5. Third one, Webull. And like Larry says in the chat here, just open up a Webull account. Very nice and easy. Uh, TrendSpider and Webull together, incredible. Both of them. I, I mean, don't take my word for it. Jump into the Facebook group. Ask people what they think about uh, you know TrendSpider and Webull. If you're thinking of getting started on stuff, they have a free seven-day trial on uh, TrendSpider. The other thing is, who doesn't have a couple hundred bucks to put into Webull? If you don't have a couple hundred bucks, you shouldn't be trading. You absolutely should not be trading. You should be investing your money. $100 a week, $50 a week, $20 a week. Put it into a brokerage account. Put it into some type of S&P tracking fund. Once you have enough money, get out of the S&P tracking fund. Start trading maybe 20% of your portfolio into stocks. Do, do things like that. Again, it goes back to what I talked to at the beginning. Have a plan. Stick to your plan. Uh, Savvy Trader. This is where you can follow my trades for free. I've got two portfolios. I've got a trading portfolio and I've got the core portfolio. The core portfolio, I just trade in and out. When I add a stock in TrendSpider, to the core portfolio, I take one out and I sell that and I buy 100 shares of the new one. So I may take Moderna out. Moderna is a hype stock that just COVID, your boy's still positive for COVID, but COVID people forget about. And until they have a flu vaccine, I just don't see them being quote unquote trusted or hyped up. So um, both of those. So the other thing is dailystockpick.substack.com. Again, the newsletter Positive feedback on the paid newsletter. If you don't want paid newsletter, there's free. I, I do a free one to accompany the podcast every day. 
So you don't have to listen to the podcast every day. You can just get the the, the newsletter in your email address. So, uh, yeah. Okay. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Hopefully I'm negative tomorrow. I'm going to test myself tomorrow. And let's hope that Meta, uh, I'm sorry, Microsoft and Google, both of which hold big portions in my portfolio. Uh, let's hope they don't screw this up. <laughs> they probably will. Okay, take care. See you guys. Bye.